Welcome. Today we're going to be disassembling a Lenovo Yoga 920-13 IKB. This is a 13-inch 2-in-1 uh, convertible laptop and this particular model has the 4K display. And to start out you're going to need a small uh, Torx bit. This is a T5. So we'll go ahead and flip it over and then we're going to remove all of the bottom case screws. Alright, once you have those bottom case screws out, we'll just go ahead and get our fingernail into the back part of the cover there. And just finish popping it off. It's this little, uh, little catch here in the middle. Um, it can feel like there's a screw or something left, but it's just a little piece right there. So once you get all those case screws out, it should be good to go for removing that bottom case. Right, so it looks like we'll go ahead and disconnect this battery first since it's right here on top and easy to get to. Um, I switched to a Phillips bit. This is a 2.0. I think a 1.5 would work as well. So just a small Phillips bit. Looks like you'll need to finish disassembling the laptop. Alright, once you get those battery screws out, you're going to just kind of lift the battery up a little bit to give you some wiggle room and see if you can get your fingernail on the little connector sides. And just work that little connector out. All right, so looks like we got a couple cooling fans we can remove next. Uh, Wi-Fi card looks like just that single screw. Um, so we'll go ahead and remove the little, actually this one looks like it's partially underneath that Wi-Fi card. Okay, so we'll go ahead and remove that Wi-Fi card first. So we'll just pop up those antennas and remove the screw. And then you can use your fingernail to uh, kind of push on that Wi-Fi card and that will allow you to remove it. All right, so for the fan connectors, there's just a little kind of a retainer you flip up right there on the ribbon side and then pull a ribbon out and then flip that back down. And then we'll remove the screw. Uh, yeah, it does look like there's, uh, so this uh, right fan, it looks like the motherboard is going to need to be uh, removed before we can get to the other little uh, connector on that. So we'll go ahead and skip to the other side. And go ahead and remove the screws. And it's the same type of connector, just flip that up with the fingernail. Work that ribbon out. So there's a, there's a little bit of tape here um, connecting the fans and the heat sink. I'm going to go ahead and leave it for now, but if you peel this tape back, um, that'll allow you to replace that fan without having to remove the heat sink first. Okay, so we'll go ahead and um, finish removing the motherboard now. So we're just going to kind of flip up on these little connectors and remove the ribbon. And then it's always a good practice to flip those back down so that they don't get broken. We'll just go along, flip up, remove the ribbon, and flip back down.
And the little speaker connector, um, it's just a kind of a pop up and off type. It's a very, very tiny connector, so you probably don't want to use any kind of tools on it. Just get your fingernail under there and just pop it up. I think I missed one over here. Alright, we'll do a second check, make sure all those ribbons are loose. And now we can remove those motherboard screws. Alright, so once we have those motherboard screws out, we can gently start wiggling that motherboard. Make sure that there's nothing else that seems to be holding it. Which it appears we're good, and we'll just slowly turn it over, make sure there's no more ribbons. Which there's not. And there we have the motherboard. So they definitely don't make it easy for you to replace or upgrade your SSD. But here on the bottom of the motherboard is your SSD drive. So we'll remove the screw and just pull it out of the slot. This is a NVMe type SSD. And that's how you remove it. All right, so for the fans and heat sink, we'll go ahead and remove the screws for the heat sink. And the numbers that are stamped on the heat sink are for reinstallation. You wanna tighten them down in that order. Uh, but as far as removal, it doesn't really matter. And once you have those screws loose, you can just wiggle on that heat sink. And since we've already disconnected the fans, I'll just pull the fan and heat sink assembly free. And I believe the Fans and heat sink can be separated once you tear those uh, strips off, little adhesive strips. I could be wrong. No, I can, I can definitely wiggle these, so they're just kind of held on by the tape there. So once you peel those uh, pieces of tape back, you'll be able to replace the fans. All right, so that is it for the motherboard. Very small motherboard, and um, it does not look like your RAM is upgradable. It's probably underneath this cover here, integrated RAM chips. So just keep that in mind. All right, so back to the palm rest assembly. Um, we're gonna leave this in one piece, but it does look like your touchpad is easily replaceable. You got four screws. Uh, your keyboard is definitely replaceable. Uh, you just have a whole bunch of screws throughout. And once you remove that, you should be able to remove that. Uh, keyboard. We're going to finish up by uh, removing the in-out board here on the side. So we got the same type of speaker connector there. We're just going to kind of pop it up and off. And then we can go ahead and remove the screws. And once you have those screws removed, you should be able to remove the board. All right, so our next step is going to be separating the display assembly from the palm rest. So we're gonna open it up all the way. And just uh, kind of look at where the display is held on. So it looks like there's a series of screws going all the way across. Um, including, it looks like, underneath the Wi-Fi antennas. So since we have the display open and it's ready to be released, we're just going to go ahead and remove all the screws along the uh, display edge here. So 
These screws are a little bit tight since they're holding on the display. I'm going to move to a 1.5 millimeter uh, Phillips screw. That tube was just a little bit too big. So it looks like the Wi-Fi antennas are also kind of held on by some adhesive. So we're going to get our spudger in there and just get a little bit of traction on that Wi-Fi antenna. See if we can get that removed. Okay, so probing around, it looks like it's actually part of the display assembly, but on the outside of the bottom of the hinge. So just to be safe, I'm gonna finish removing the display assembly, and then we can see how easy it is to get those Wi-Fi antennas. You guys have an interesting watch band type hinge system. It's pretty cool. All right, so now that we have all of those screws out, we can separate the display assembly from the palm rest. And we are pretty much done with the palm rest. The, the uh, speakers are just held on by a couple of Phillips head screws. And like I said, the keyboard and touchpad are also replaceable just by removing the screws. And also for the fingerprint reader, looks like it's just one screw holding that on. All right, closer look at the display. So yeah, it's just a little bit of pretty strong adhesive holding on those Wi-Fi antennas. It might be helpful to have a heat gun in this case, but we'll just go ahead and finish separating those from the display. I would say there's a small there's a small bit of metal kind of holding it in place as well here. Um, we're gonna leave this display assembly complete uh, to basically since it's a touch screen um, to separate the screen from the digitizer is a huge pain and it you can easily break things because they're so thin. Um, so on this type of display assembly, you're way better off just buying it as a complete unit instead of trying to replace any of the parts inside yourself because um, you're more than likely going to break things, um, especially if you don't have a heat gun. So we'll go ahead and just leave those Wi-Fi antennas. There's some kind of uh, metal tab that's uh, still connected under the hinge system. So I don't think we really want to mess with that. Um, it does look like some kind of electrical connection. So. We'll just stick it back into place. And that's essentially how you disassemble most of the Lenovo, Lenovo Yoga 920-13 IKB. Um, if this video helped you at all or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.